I get asked very often, how did you get into woodworking? And I say, I got into it out of a matter of necessity. Uh, I'll meet a lot of younger guys that are trying to come into the trades and wondering about different educational programs they can go through and things like that. And, and I'll be honest, I'm all for it. I'm all for um, some of the union trade schools and, and, and some of the, the private um, some of the private woodworking colleges and universities that are out there. Those are great. But for me, what it really came down to was that uh, I needed to make more money than what I was making. And uh, I was pretty decent with some tools. I was pretty decent with some handyman skills. And uh, I called up a buddy of mine from my church that I had done some work for. I said, hey, uh, you got any side work? And he says, well, I'm making cabinets. Do you, uh, you know anything about that? I said, no, but I'm willing to learn. He said, all right, see you at the shop. And so I showed up. And uh, my first day when I walked into a wood shop, my buddy from church said, I'm going to teach you everything I need to know, but I got to go to a sales meeting first. So uh, here's a bunch of doors. Here's the style and rail profiles. There's a router table. There's some bits in the drawers. Don't kill yourself. And that's pretty much how I remember it. It might be a little bit of a variation from that, but I think this is before YouTube. It's definitely before smartphones. And I needed to figure this out. I was very mechanically inclined, so I wasn't too afraid of it. My father and grandfather taught me a whole lot about woodworking growing up, but I had another good friend in that shop. And between Chuck and Scott and them, I learned probably about 90% of what I know in woodworking. The next 9% I learned about on my own, just out of a matter of necessity as well. And the next 1% is what I continually strive to learn each and every day. But I went to work for Scott for many years and then the whole 2008 thing happened and we, uh, we had to split ways. So I started my own business because 2008 was a great time to start a custom cabinetry and woodworking business. And I did, and I did it well. I was, it was a side gig while I was a firefighter paramedic and that went well for many years to the point where it actually became a full-time job. My wife and I ran that business side by side. Uh, building a lot of beautiful pieces for a lot of happy customers. And uh, we had our unhappy customers just as well. Uh, and we had our unhappy uh, selves just with some of our customers. It's business is never perfect, especially in the trades, but we did our best to keep everybody happy as long as we could. And then we got to a point where we grew too big, too fast, and we're starting to run into too many problems. So we quit. We folded up shop. We gave back all of our customers deposits. Um, and, uh, and we went on to start our life over without woodworking. I sold all of my tools. I had so many Festool tools and saw stops and lots of fun stuff and, and we sold everything. And I kept just a bunch of basic essentials until we got to where we are now. And I needed to start some woodworking back up. And that's what leads me to this video. A lot of people ask me, what do you need to start a workshop? What kind of tools should you get? And Quite honestly, there's really only two that you need. There's a bunch that you can get. There's a bunch that you're gonna spend a lot of money on too. And you're gonna find ways to justify that. I know that uh, just as well as the next woodworker. But when it comes down to it, there's only two tools you need. And so I'm gonna share with you guys why I believe all you need essentially is a drill or a driver and a circular saw. My preference for these happens to be a track saw and uh, a combination of a drill and a driver. But what about all the rest of the stuff in the shop? Do you need it? Well, let's talk about what the principles are of woodworking. It's to cut and to fasten. That's it. That's woodworking at the core. You're, you're manipulating wood by shaping it, cutting it, cutting different pieces into different shapes and sizes, and you're fastening them together to make your finished product. And so miter saws and table saws are all extremely helpful, and uh, I don't say that you shouldn't ever have them, but it's like you woke up tomorrow morning, Tiger Woods invites you to go golfing at Pebble Beach, and you're halfway across the country, you have airfare for you and one carry-on bag, you can bring one golf club with. What club are you bringing to play a round of 18? For all you golfers out there, we, we can debate this one in the comments all day long. I'm taking an eight iron and that's it. Hold me to it down in the comments, tell me what you're gonna have. But uh, it's in woodworking, it's really not a lot different. If you've got a small shop, you guys can see I'm working out of a quarter of a, of a two car garage, right? I don't need a lot of space because I've gotten really efficient at what I'm doing. Uh, I do have to find storage for sheet goods from time to time and most of that's behind the cameras. Maybe one of these days I'll take you guys on a little tour, but at the end of the day, 
it's simplicity for me. It, it, if it becomes a job, it becomes a business, you want to be able to streamline this and make it as profitable as possible. So less money on tools and uh, more money in the pocket. And so I use a track saw. I love my Fest tool track saw that I had before. The Wen track saw is great because it's super, super cheap. You know, you're looking at less than a couple hundred bucks for a track saw and a track. And I use drill drivers, you know, table saws and miter saws are extremely important tools. Sanding stations, these allow you to do things a little bit more efficiently or a little bit differently if you have the space to work with them. But when I first got into this space, it was me and a track saw. I do use a miter saw, I do use a table saw, but I didn't even have a table saw set up in here. And honestly, it's just this four, this four foot by eight foot table that I'm using with a four by eight sheet of one and a half inch foam insulation board on there. And uh, it's a collapsible work table too. It's the Bora centipede table. And really that's all you need to get going, right? And that's where you, you build what you're building. And you can see I've got this beautiful piece of quarter sawn mahogany I'm gonna turn into a hall tree bench. And it's one more paying job after the next that gives you a little bit more space and a little bit more breathing room to throw some profit back into your business or just in these crazy times of inflation, throw some profit back into your grocery bill like we do. But it's cutting and fastening. And at the end of the day, that's really all you really need. So we can get into all the other fun tools that you can buy and you can use. And we can talk about like, you know, if you're screwing things together or versus not screwing them together, well, get a wall full of clamps. That's great. You don't want to buy more until you have to buy more. And so at Warrior House DIY, we're talking to the DIYers. There's plenty of professionals out there. You're going to have plenty of comments for me and I'd love to hear them and we'll chat down in the comments. But at the end of the day, if you're a DIYer looking to go professional, there's ways to do it without breaking the bank and dropping all your profit into the next tool or gadget that you need. I think, you know, if you've got a simple bag full of goodies, I have a link down below on all the tools that I use, everything that I keep in what I would call the Warrior House go bag. I could bring this to any customer's house and probably get the job done. I'm usually going to have my drills in the drill bag and bring those with as well. Track saw typically stays in the shop. There's lots of other tools that might be used for different applications, whether this is handyman work versus carpentry work and things like that. Um, but I, I'd love to hear your comments. Where are you at in your DIY or even your woodworking journey? What are your goals? What are you aspiring to do? Are you trying to go professional and take your business uh, you know, to a full-time gig. Are you trying to take your woodworking business to a YouTube channel? That's a lot of fun, but there's also a lot of fun in the comments. Just be aware on that. Hey guys, YouTube is a great platform to share your skills and your knowledge with the world out there. If you're doing it as a business, there's caveats that come with that. You just got to kind of know how to work in and out of what's popular on YouTube versus what's popular with woodworkers. And you'll find out what it is and what it isn't. But hey, if you've gained some value from this video, please give me a like, give me a subscribe, maybe share this one with, uh, with some of your friends that might be looking for the similar topic. And uh, again, in the comments down below, I'd love to hear where you're at, questions that you have, you can reach me at my email, it's down in the description as well, and I'll see you in the next video.